Andrew, um, our darling Andrew, he was 16 when he died. He was um, six foot, five and a half, built like a tank, larger than life, always had a smile on his face, was always the life and soul of the party. He was car mad. Um, as I say, we bought him his first Action Man bike, you know, the little electric ones when he was about three. And it went from there. He did biking, quad biking, and then he moved on to motorsports. And yeah. um, he was even clever enough. He went up north and got his own, applied for his own license at 13 because you couldn't do it in, in the Republic until you were 14. So he had it, he was way ahead and he was always, um, always thinking, always fixing things, always. He was, yeah, he was, he was a great man though at uh, dismantling engines, but not putting them back together again, you know. Um, but he used to go, as I said, we'd, um, most weekends, I, um, the guy's never involved in motorsport, I had no interest in it. But um, obviously, you know, you have uh, a son or a daughter that has interest in something, or hobby, you're gonna support that. So we did, and we went with lots of travelling around around England and Ireland, uh, racing, different various different types of cars, um, expensive to sport. I found out pretty quickly, <laughs> but um, but well, a you very got sponsorship, didn't you? You did got sponsorship, yeah. um, us. <laughs> but um, it was a great great time, it was great, great memories. And I'm glad that happened actually, because that gave me something, you know, connection with them. Um, but Sally Ann said he was very well liked. He did make an impact everywhere he went. Um, he was good way he did. He had that, that hobby was a bit. So his only hobby really was that, and a bit of rugby maybe. Yeah, he played Which, rugby, yeah. and he sailed. He liked to sail during the yeah, summer. Yeah, and then he could spend time with me. We have a boat, and he spent time. We go here and there, like Scotland or England or around yeah. Ireland. Yeah, he loved the boat, and so, that was precious time for you too. It was. As well. It was great because I would take a bit longer here in summer then, you know, when you got that age. And Sarah May would join us, her, her daughter, which is important now, you know, at this stage. My mom had been ill months before Andrew died, and actually he babysat her the Saturday night before he died. And um, she'd been talking about her funeral. And where Andrew went to school, they used to do a mass every Sunday morning. All the boys would be in their uniform, and one of the songs they would sing at the end of mass was Glory, Glory, Hallelujah. And my mom used to say, I want that played at my funeral and I want to be buried and I want, you know, a nice dark wood coffin and I want, and I want. And um, obviously Andrew would be in the car with us. And he said, I love that song too, mom. And I want to be buried. And they discussed organ transplant and organ donation in school. And we both have organ donor cards. And um, uh, my mom's pal had um, decreed that she was donating her whole body for medical science. And my mom was saying, well, if I've got anything that's any use to anybody. And Andrew said, well, my mom and dad are going to donate. I'm going to be an organ donor. I'd like to pass on, you know, um, if there's anything any good to anybody else. So in retrospect, we'd had all the conversations months and months before he died. So we knew, mm. you know, how he felt. We knew that he was, yeah. as soon as he got to of age, he wanted his own donor card. And uh, we knew a lot of the things that he'd, you know, because we discussed them with my mom. Now, thankfully, my mom is still here. Um, and thank God she's hale and hearty. But um, we we knew a lot of the things that he would wish in the event of him dying. Yeah, looking back yeah. now, when you look, um, you know, what's happened to us, those conversations may be difficult, but sometimes I think family should have them, really, because we, we aren't here forever, no. you know. We're and, not here uh, for a long time. And really, you know, I do have friends who are transplant recipients, and um, I know how their life has changed receiving an organ really has changed them. Um, it's made a, more, a really positive life for them. And uh, I think it's something, and also, you know, some, some part of your uh, son, of our son, um, lives on, which is a bit, in a way, I look at it that way, you know, um, definitely um, Andrew did help at least three people. Mm. Um, of course, I don't know who they are. No. And that's the way it should be, really. Mm. I think it's best to have it that way, yeah, be anonymous and, uh, and you know for us to be able to do that for somebody mm. um you know i mean it's it, it as Derry said it's a little piece of him is still living on and he was always a giver he was always somebody that would give freely of his time he'd give you his last euro mm. he'd wouldn't he he'd, he'd, well yeah he had a very positive thing about him was he protected the weakest mm. always like he's in boarding school so any of the new boys arriving in in their first year first term he was the one, and we found this out afterwards, would go down to our dorms and uh, nurse them and say, I'm here, I need help, because it's difficult the first few days. Yeah. So he was the one that did that a lot. 
first few months. We got so yeah. many letters after he yeah, died. From kids saying he from was kids the one. Saying, yeah, yeah, yeah. He was the one who helped them. He and was he, the one who was there. He did it quietly. He was, I never knew about it. I mean, I never knew about it. So yeah. he did something that was something he did himself, mm. which is very impressive, I think. Mm. Really, yeah. Yeah, no, he was a yeah. wonderful child. And we were very lucky to have him for as long as we did. It's eight years ago now. Obviously, we miss him every day. But, yeah. you know, to, to think again that there's a little bit of him living on yeah. and that he has given the gift of life to all these people is just amazing. Like, we knew that Andrew wanted to um, donate his organs. We knew that. So that made a big difference. So we told our doctor that, and then he passed it on. But um, we hadn't known that. I don't think, you know, we hadn't talked about it. We hadn't talked. Well, we if we known. hadn't talked about it. Yes, exactly. Yeah, if we hadn't yeah. talked about it, we wouldn't know. Yeah. So I think um, all families should maybe just, it's something um, that's positive to do. Mm. Because you're, when you're, 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 sorry, you're, yeah. um, your legacy is living on. Yeah. But when you're in that situation where your loved one is about to pass or is brain dead or whatever, it's very difficult to think that mm. their their organs might be of use to somebody else. You're not in the zone, are you? Uh, no, you're not you taking don't think that way. clearly, yeah. you don't think whatever. And of course, once they die, it's too late. So I think it's something, as, as you said, that every family should have the conversation and that every family should say, well, look, you know, in the event. So I have everything written down. And I know what you want as well. So there will be no, there'll be no problems in that regard. And our daughter knows exactly what we want. But um, we're grateful that we had the conversation, aren't we? Yeah, no, sure. Yeah. It just made it, it made very it, easy. It made it simpler. Mm. 